maybe get uh, Robert to record it. Great stuff. Okay, hello everyone, and, and welcome to this afternoon's webinar on iPad apps for dyscalculia and numeracy difficulties. Today, my colleague Alan, that's Alan Wilson, he, Alan is the information officer at Call, and he's also the innovator behind many of the, the Call's popular wheel of apps, including the uh, dyslexia wheel of apps, which you've just been talking about. So, Alan will give you a brief overview of where to find the dyscalculia and numeracy difficulties wheel of apps, and, and He'll also demonstrate something as well. And as always, the webinar will last for about 20 minutes with an opportunity to ask questions at the end. So without further delay, I'll pass you over to Alan. Okay. Thanks very much, Craig. I, I should warn everybody from the start that I have a habit of overrunning my time schedule. So if anybody's in any hurry to get away, I won't be at all offended if you log off before I've finished. Um, as I th thought, we'd show people how to get hold of the um, app wheel. Uh, so you go to the Call Scotland website, that's www.callscotland.org.uk and I'm on the home page at the moment. So up here, just using this wee grey blob to show where I'm going, I'm going to click on Downloads. So we'll click on Downloads and then it's Posters and Leaflets and you'll see we've got lots and lots of posters here but the one we're after for today is the one down here it's the big blue circle with a, a big a yellow circle in the middle so i just tap on that to download it well it doesn't actually download straight away it goes to a page with a wee bit more information about it um, so you can read what the app the wheel is all about and uh, i did mention that um it's been downloaded nearly 2,000 times since the end of October, which is not quite the best, but it's doing pretty well. Um, I'll tap on download now. This will break down onto my iPad. Okay, it's now on my iPad. Key thing to remember about this is it's not actually downloaded at this stage. It's you're just viewing it in the browser that you're using. So if I'm wanting to do things with it, then I really want to uh, bring it down, download it, and put it into one of the, the apps that can read um, a PDF file. So I'm going to choose to copy it to iBooks. So we tap on Copy to iBooks. And I've come across into iBooks. And here we go. Here's the poster. Now I can... So enlarge it a wee bit so people can see it. Um, you'll see we've got these sort of rings around the outside which have got sort of categories on them. These categories are based on the Scottish, Scottish uh, Curriculum for Excellence but um, it's, it's loosely based. We've taken a few liberties along the way just so it could fit things in properly. And one of the tricks of these wheels when you're using the electronic version, and not everybody knows about this, but if you actually tap on the app, for example, I'm just going to tap on over on the right hand side under basic operations, I'm going to tap on number frames like that. And that takes me across to the iTunes store where I can read a bit more about number frames. And then at this point, I can decide whether or not I think it might be useful for an individual pupil. Um, so that's quite a useful hand guide to actually find out a wee bit more about the apps. So on the wheel, you just see little images and names of, of, of the, the various apps. You don't really have, we don't have enough space on the wheels to get, provide more detailed information. Okay, that's enough of looking at the wheel. I'm now going to actually look at some of the apps. I've made a sort of a fairly random selection of apps. I've now got, I'm going to try and fit in eight. I'm not sure if I'll manage it, but we'll see how it goes. Um, first one I'm planning to look at is called Subitize This. Now, subitizing is one of these great skills that people have to develop. It's a, Subitizing is, a, is a, a basic awareness of number and they tend to think about it in terms of if you've got somebody's got a, a group of objects placed in front of them if you're good at subitizing you'll be able to see straight away that this group of five objects is 
five objects, which is the same as the number five and the same as the word five. Most adults can recognize a group of five or six objects without having to stop and count them. Whereas many people dyscalculate, it's one of these skills which they don't necessarily have. So sometimes you can actually practice um, using an app to actually try to develop these skills. Again, it's one of the key skills of numeracy is the ability to subitize. So this app is called Subitize This. It was developed by an organization called Classroom Focused Software, and it's free. Whenever I open one of the Classroom Focused Software apps, I always think, what am I supposed to do now? Because it's got all these symbols up at the top, and it's not at all obvious what you're supposed to do. However, the, tr the key points to remember about all their apps is you always tap on the question mark in the top to find out what you're meant to do and then you tap on the jigsaw piece to actually be presented with a task. This one's got a few extra buttons uh, because you can change different settings but we'll come on to that in a minute. So I'm going to type on the question mark to find out what this what this activity is all about. So here we go. Your task is to identify correct number of elements in each of the patterns displayed. Tap a number one to five at the bottom of each pattern. Correct choices highlighted in green, incorrect choices highlighted in red. There are various settings I can change. Um, so just reading here, select the number of pattern elements. I'm going to have up here where this circle with the two arrows is. If I tap on that, I can see different numbers of um, objects available. I could have 3 to 5, I could have 1 to 5, I could have 6 to 10, I could have 1 to 3. I'm going to go with 3 to 5. And this item here means that I can have objects presented as different shaped objects. I'm just going to make it fairly simple at this point by just using the one object. I'm ready to give it a shot now. So I'm going to tap, as I said, mentioned before, it's tap on the jigsaw square to start up the activity. So here we go. I have to count to estimate how many items there are. So in this first group, I can, I can see that there's five. So I'm going to tap on the five. And it comes up green, so that's right. Next one is three. I'm going to make a mistake on this next one. I'm going to think it's five. And it comes up as red. Now, I don't have an option to, to tap on the correct value after that. So the red stays on the screen. Move on to the last one. Um, that's five objects. There is an option to turn on a timer. So let's do that before we move on to the next item, next selection. Here we go on the screen again. reason for turning on the timer is, is a good way to identify whether or not somebody can actually see this group has got four, this group has got three. Now I don't know how many there are here, so I'm going to sort of do a little count. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And I'll tap on five. And this one is... So it's because of this, you see the times down at the bottom of the screen. So because I had to stop and count the, the five objects here, you can actually see that it's, it's taking me a bit longer to do that one. So there's definitely a hint of counting going on rather than subitizing and recognizing straight away just how many objects there are. Um, so that's a quick overview of subitize this. I'm not going to go into great detail in any of these apps. I just want to give you a quick flavor of things. You may, do, at the end of the session, you'll be able to think, oh, that was a quite nice app. I'll maybe go away and get that one, have a closer look at that one. It might be worth a look. Um, I should say, subitize this, if I haven't mentioned it already, it's a free app. Which, so we all like free. Right. I'm going to move on now to another app from the same people. This is again classroom focused software. And this one is called Patterns, Colors and Shapes. 
see the old old familiar sort of question mark to find out what we're meant to do. And there's a play the, the jigsaw piece in the top right lets us actually play the, the, the activity. Um, this one press both puzzle piece to button to begin. Job is to complete the repeating pattern started for you. So we're going to get patterns and they could be provided in various colours or shapes. So that's fair enough. And then you just carry on repeating the pattern. Um, this is again is developing quite a useful range of skills at the end to identify patterns, which can be quite crucial for some later stages of developing numeracy. And in some some of these exercises, we'll be doing a little bit of simple counting as well. So again, it's developing different skills. Um, I can turn toggle sound on and off, or I can fiddle around with number of elements by using this um, the the wheel. So here we have I've got um, red, then green, then red, then green, then red, then green. I'm going to guess that it's green that comes next. Let's just turn some sound on. Hopefully this will work. Green. Uh, oh, it's not green. It's actually red. Red. There we go. Let's try to write it up here. Let's make a mistake. Red. Pull the red up. It sits for a second and then it goes back. So it's not the right answer, that one. Green. So do the green again. Let's red. Red again. Green. Getting a red. Nice, nice little rhythm here. Green. And finally back red. to red. And that's me completed the row. So I would tap on the jigsaw again. It's not telling me whether or not it's right, but the fact that I've completed everything um, it does suggest that I've that the, the task has been completed correctly. So I could tap on the jigsaw again and get another screen. I can make the patterns more complicated if I want. Um, I could have something like A, B, C, D for a pattern. And it's gone back to one of the other ones. I've got the path, a choice of patterns that I could use. But there's, you can also create your own patterns. You've got um, set pattern one. You would put in just different letters, a combination of A, B, C, D, E, um, to fully create your pattern. Um, right, I'm going to rush on to the next app in my selection. This is 100 square. Um, again, it's got quite a lot of different activities available. I'm going to select an exercise. This is a, a multiplication square. Um, looking for patterns here. So uh, this I'm going to with, go with multiples of three. Um, so that's three, six, nine, twelve. Is this a start of a pattern? I wonder. 15, 18, I think there could easily be a pattern here. So I'm just going to go 21, 24, 27, 30. Um, that's only, it's only going up from 1 to 30 in this, the way it's set up at the moment. But there is an I down in the bottom right corner. If I tap, if I tap on that, I can get it to show all numbers up to 100. Um, so I'll just turn that on. I could be really nasty and hide the numbers because there are numbers in the squares at the moment, which makes it a bit easier to um, to type the to enter the numbers into the, the square. So I think I'll keep that. It'd be a bit nasty to remove these numbers. Um, let's select a different exercise. Let's try multiples of seven. So here we go. One, seven. We, we could count on eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, four. 15, go on, 20, that's 21, that's next, 28, starting looking for a pattern, not seeing anything just yet, next 35, oh, seeing something like, starting to look like a bit of a pattern now, next one after 35 is 42, definite hint that if you come down, let's go to the top two, say 28, if you come down to, down to, and one to the right, 
and that will be the next in the sequence. 42, down 2, one to the right. 63, I missed one, so that's goes up to 35, down 2, one to the right. And that's 56. So we've got actually people are getting a chance to actually see the patterns that develop in numbers when you're doing multiplication. Um, this app I mentioned is called 100 Square. And if memory serves me correctly, it's free. But I'm just going to check my notes. Yes, it's free. So we're doing quite well for the free apps. The next one I'm going to look at costs money, unfortunately. It's a massive sum of 99 pence. So it's called the Multiplica Multiplication Table Challenge, though if you look for it in the iTunes store, it's in as the Multiplication Challenge. Um, if I tap on play, if we go into the practice mode. It's a bit similar to the multiplication square that we had before, except now you're relying on somebody to do the multiplication themselves and they have to sort of be aware of the multiplication. But you can build up your own multiplication square with this app. Um, so we start off with some of the nice easy ones like. If I tap in one of these squares here, I'm going to do go for 1 times 1. 1 times 1 on the little keypad at the bottom, I just tap in 1. Let's do these. I'll carry on doing the next one down. That's 2 times 1 is 2. Next one down, 3 times 1 is 3. Then 4 times 1 is 4. And as we know, one times two is or two times one is the same as one times two. So I could go up here. That's one times two is two. One times three is three. One times four is four. And so on. You could actually fill in, get people to the people to make their own multiplication square. And they could then start off with the easy ones. The next light ones might be sort of two, the two times table, might be then the five times table, if you do the ten times table, and eventually you'll end up with something with something that's maybe three quarters filled in and it's just got a few of the harder ones to fill in. Um, but it's good, good table for getting practice with multiplication. Um, it does become a bit harder. There are harder options. You can turn on a timer. There's also the really nasty one, which is known as auto select. So we just tap on auto select and tap on start. And now it's going eight times six. Oh, that's a hard one to start. I would have much rather started off with one times one, but eight times six, let's say 48, if I remember correctly, 10 times 10. Oh, that will be 100. 1, 0, 0. 1 times 5 is 5. 2 times 6 is, let's try the wrong number, let's try 14. 1, 4. Oh, it's quite happy with that. Um, except it's not jumping onto the next, so maybe I got that wrong. So what I'll do is type in, oh, I'll just have to clear that one. Two times it. Oh, it's 12, of course. Yes, that's it. That's better. And it's jumped on to the next square for me. 9 times 3 is 27. And so on. Again, that's just giving you a flavor of the, this app. This one is called Multiplication Table Challenge, or in the iTunes store, it's called Multiplication Table, or Multiplication Challenge, sorry. And it costs 99 pence. So, moving on. Quite often, people start to wonder about um, fractions. We're jumping quite far ahead in terms of uh, the numeracy skills here. This is one that's called fractions and decimals. And it's got various activities that you can try. Um, I'm going to look for some equivalent fractions. Um, I'm going to do a matching exercise here. So I'll tap on matching. And, ooh, I was expecting things to come up slightly differently. Oh, no, this, this one is okay. 
Uh, looking for something the same as 8 tenths. I'll be looking for something that's got a 5 on the bottom. So, where have we got a 5 on the bottom? Is it 2 fives? No. 1 fifth? No. It's probably 4 fifths, which is that one down the bottom. So, I go up to the 8 tenths, and the bottom row, third from the right, is 8 tenths. Sorry, then this is 4 fifths. So, that's two of the, the, the patterns matched. Six tenths, it'll probably be three fifths. So I'm going starting off six tenths, and I just noticed down here three fifths down on the bottom right. So six tenths and three fifths are both the same. Um, so I'll come back out of that bit. There, and back up the stage. There's a, there are various exercises that you can do using fractions and decimals in this in this book. We haven't really got time to go through them all. So we'll come out of that one. Um, I'll go into jungle coins. Um, right. There are not very many apps that use um, UK money or uh, the sterling or the pounds and pence or whatever they want to call them. Uh, when we're looking for apps, we really want to find just a couple one of them was Jungle Coins, which is the one that we're in just now. This cost £2.99. And the other one we found is called Money Maths, which, I, if memory serves me right, I think that the other one is free. Um, notice that it's not got the up-to-date pound coins. Again, I think the other one that we use, that's Money Maths, I think it's not been updated to use the modern pound coins. So anyway, it's asking me, you paid £50 for an item that costs £48.37. pence. A slight correct change to the right. Okay, well that's slide of a pound coin. So that would be £49.37. So I might want to bring it to 38 and bring it up to 40 I think I might need 10 pence to bring it up to the 50 And another 50 pence perhaps. And let's pretend I'm done. Oh, I was practicing this earlier so I got five correct answers before. Now we've got this, got this five correct answers in the row. You paid £100 for an item that costs £99.98. Pence. Slide correct change to the right. I'm not going to just show that. I'm just going to let you see. I've tapped up in the top left to see what the other options are. You can find coins, you can count money, you can compare coins, and you can get the correct change. Um, so that's quite a reasonable selection there. Um, six down, two to go, and I'm not doing too badly for time, only two minutes over. I'm not going to bother with GeoBoard. It's a nice one, and I'll, I'll say something about it. I won't actually use it, though. I just want to let you see Socratic. This is going really quite, getting quite far advanced, I must admit. So it's an app that's designed for solving equations. And it works in quite a nice way. I've got a, a sheet of paper here which has got several equations on it. Uh, so, but let's try to solve this 3x squared minus 58 equals 0. So I just tap it in the right place, tap on the screen. I wasn't quite sure which one I wanted. So I stretch out the handles. And that's fine. And now we'll click on search. And it goes off, searches the internet, and it finds various little algorithms that hopefully will produce the answer. It's not found the one that I was expecting. Never mind. 3x, we're starting off with 3x squared minus 58 equals 0. That's the same as 3x squared equals 588. So x squared is 588 divided by 3. Um, x squared equals 196, so x is plus or minus the square root of 196, so x is plus or minus 14. And if you don't like that solution, you can just scroll through various other solutions. So it's a way, it's a way that so uh, a little app that finds ways of solving these equations and yes here we go back to the but there's one that's it, it missed at the start um it's a bit of a shame never mind 
this one you're not likely to be using this with in a primary school and hopefully people won't be tempted to cheat too much with it when they move into a secondary and start actually solve it, trying to solve equations. Um, I said I wasn't going to use dual board, but I will just very very quickly look at do something with it. Dual board lets you explore shapes, and you can create various shapes. I'm not going to go any further with it. The thing I want to emphasise here is many people with numeracy difficulties have, diff as I say, struggle with numbers, but they, they could actually be quite good at geometry and shapes. Um, I was at a, a lecture where there's a, a specialist in dyscalculia, this was about a year ago, and he said that his son had dyscalculia, but he managed to get into university, he managed to pass uh, math, the maths exam necessary to get into uh, university, even though he could hardly add or subtract or do anything, but he was very good at geometry. So he managed to get enough marks from the geometry questions to be able to pass, the, to get a sufficiently good grade in the exam to get into university. Anyway, that's enough of the um, the various apps. I've managed to go get through eight apps in about, in about 20 minutes, which I thought was pretty good going. So I'll hand it back now to Craig, and he will um, I take any, any, I hope he's been fielding any questions. I'll try and answer any questions that Craig will then yeah, okay, pass on to me. We'll just go back. Uh, Robert takes us back to the main screen, to the sharing section. Great, thanks, Robert. Um, okay, so this is a chance for you to uh, ask some, some questions. Let's just scroll down. Um, don't see any questions yet. Yes, if you have any questions you'd like to ask, Alan, please uh, just pop them into the text box below. Um, I, I would uh, I, I, I quite like things like mod math, Alan. Uh, is, is that one you'd also possibly recommend? Yep, that's, I, I've shown that one and um, two or three other webinars in the past. Webinars, yeah. And so I decided to just leave that one and... If you're working with pupils who have great difficulty with lining up numbers when they're doing sums, um, um, it, it lets you put the numbers into squares and you can create um, the, the sort of things like the, the, the square signs. So, so it's, so it's um, x squares, you can um, solve this, all these algebra type things. Um, you can do it for basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, as well. So it's, it's one of my favorite apps. Yeah. But that that was a, a nice breadth of, of of different types of apps for different kinds of areas of of numeracy, which was which was quite good. Um, Pat's asking, have you seen Photomath? Yep. Uh, this is a scan the equation app, which then I, shows how it's solved. I've seen Photomath, and it's on the the, the wheel for um, office solving. Um, I decided to sort of show Socratic. Because I was reading in the magazine just a month or so ago that it had been voted the top Android app of 2017. So I thought, oh, I'll just have a look at the, the iPad equivalent. And it's turned out to be quite quite a good one. Uh, so Photomath so does the same sort of Android job. As well. Yeah. Uh, have you had much luck with that, Pat, with uh, Photomath? Uh, well, Pat is typing her answer. If anyone has any other questions, if not, we'll uh, close the session. Um, you can just see. You've tried it. You've heard some good yeah. feedback on it. Oh, well, good. There's, there's sort of two or three others to do that, and certainly Photomath is a, is a good map, a good app uh, that I've seen. Um, another one that does it is. Uh, it's math picks. I think that does it. Math picks was that earlier? Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's on the wheel. Okay, so uh, I think we'll. Oh, Liz is uh, typing a question, and we've got clear. Uh, are there any apps you could recommend for recording or storing strategies? This is for Clear Sun. Oh no. Are Are you thinking about things like? Um, solving word problems. 
uh, it's just as I'm start as I'm starting to say that I think you're probably thinking it's something totally different. There, you could you could use one note. Uh, you could have a sort of different one. One note is a sort of an electronic jotter. Uh, I'm finding it's, I was sort of finding it quite hard to say this because I've got my I can hear my voice in in my ear as I'm saying this. So it's really distracting. Uh, hang on just a second. I was saying you could use one note, which is something that works as a sort of an electronic jotter. And you could have different pages for, you've got to say a hint, you put together some maybe a few hints for addition, then you would have um, a folder in the one note for, say, arithmetic. And you then you have a page for hints on addition. And then you put all the hints that you get. And they can come from all sorts of things. It could be from a website, it could be something somebody's told you, or it could be a wee YouTube video that shows you how to do a particular sort of addition. And you put all this onto the one page in one note. So you'd have this page for all your addition hints. You could have another page for all the subtraction hints, um, and, and so on. So these are sort of things that would be worth coming back to. When I sort of mentioned okay. the um, word problem, situation because it's quite often you'll get th things like oh John has 27 pencils and he gives 10 to Mary and 3 to Fred how many pencils has he got left um, these things can be quite hard for somebody with um, difficulties with um, numeracy but those are really nice it used to be an app but now it's a website um, the, the app the map the app used to be called something like oh can't remember um, but the website is Math Playground and there's a link to it from the wee box on the bottom right hand corner of the poster and it show, it uses what's known okay. as the Singapore method for solving these type of wonder, wonder, um, word problems it uses a, a big bar to represent the big number then little bars to represent the smaller numbers, and then you put the little numbers that you've got into the, the wee bars, and it then becomes fairly obvious what your sum is going to be, as it makes it much easier to work. Okay. Also got some good suggestions from Agnes. Um, well, sorry, Kathleen, right, who's so seeing Explain Everything. Oh, yeah, I can wait to record Stuff that's well. been on oh. the screen, no, which I've been really well being with, with okay. the on. And seesaw for recording. Yep, that was seesaw. Quite, quite well. Seesaw. Yeah. Not familiar with seesaw, but I'm sure it would be and, uh, quite good. Book creator as well. Book creator. Yeah. yeah, book creator. Yeah. Yeah. Just one last question. Uh, um, Liz is asking any suggestions yeah, for number one. There, there, uh, there, there are many people with dyslexia who have memory issues, either short term or long term memory. Liz is asking, is there any suggestions for number bond practice? I did see something earlier. Uh, no. oh. mm. Again, I'm just having a look at things here. My mind has gone blank at this point. Um, I think oh, some of the things up up to 100, which is in the number recognition, is one that's quite positive. I think that's got some of that sort of thing in. Also, the things like 10 frames math, if you're thinking in terms of number bonds for 10, then that's a very good. Um, and there are quite a few sort of um, number frames apps around, which are very good for number bonds. You get also the oh, number rack. In amongst the basic operations, again, that's, that would be you could use, certainly use that for number bonds. Okay, great, thanks, and thanks to everyone for their suggestions and for attending uh, the webinar today. So, uh, thanks to Alan as well for hosting it, and uh, until next week's webinar, I'll say goodbye hey, from everyone. Yeah, thanks. Next, next one's in two uh, weeks, so Craig. A website in. Sorry. Next one's in two weeks' time. In two weeks' time, okay. It's weeks uh, time. Janet Scott from SCTCI talking about the the IPAX resource. IPAX, great stuff. Okay.
Well, okay, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks to Shirley for popping that link in. Thanks to Alan. Thanks to Robert for doing all the techie no, stuff. Uh, see you two weeks' time. Okay. Cheers, everyone. Thank you Bye. all for coming. Bye.